Microsoft just released the Surface Pro X, the decidedly slicker looking Surface Pro powered by a new type of chipset that we'll discuss more in detail in a bit. Now, Microsoft sent me one to check out and I figured I'd try to do a complete walkthrough on it for you guys. Now, if you aren't familiar with Complete Walkthrough, the channels where I try to go through every feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the styling. Like the other devices in the Surface Pro lineup, the Pro X is a two-in-one. You buy the tablet part, and then you choose which keyboard cover you want to attach to it. In this case, I have the signature type cover that comes with the new Surface Slim Pen that was launched alongside the Pro X for $269. But if you don't need the pen, there is a signature type cover without it for $139. The Pro X only comes in one color, black. It's made out of anodized aluminum and has a kickstand that has some rigidity to it and can be set in a position anywhere from 0 to 165 degrees. And it actually holds it there pretty well. Compared to the Pro 7 that was also launched at the same time, the new Pro X is 7.3 millimeters thin versus 8.5 on the Pro 7, is a tad taller, 8.2 inches versus 7.9, and a hair less wide, 11.3 versus 11.5. But with those difference in dimensions, we have a larger 13 inch 3.2 aspect ratio instead of a 12.3 inch 3.2 aspect ratio screen of the Pro 7. That screen, by the way, has much smaller bezels around it than the Pro 7 and has a 2880 by 1920 resolution. Now they added some pixels to make sure that the slightly larger screen has that same 267 DPI that the Pro 7 has. It is a touchscreen display that also supports the Surface Pen input, the slim version that I have here or any of the other versions. Surrounding that screen, we have a dual two watt front facing Dolby Audio capable speakers that are hidden pretty well at the top and sound like this. We also have a five megapixel front facing camera that's capable of 1080p video that looks and sounds like this. The camera is also capable of Windows Hello and allows you to unlock the device with your face. Around the back, we have a rear 10 megapixel camera that can shoot up to 4K resolution. And here are some samples of that. I need a reservation for two at eight. Two at eight? Perfect. <laughs> See you that's then. That's nice mobile video. <laughs> The Surface Pro X weighs just 1.7 pounds and is one gram, literally one gram, less than the i7 version of the Surface Pro 7. Now, as with most Surface Pro devices, the Pro X magnetically connects to the type cover, and that magnet is no joke, by the way. The type cover has backlit keys and is covered in the Alcantara fabric that we've come to kind of expect from Microsoft. Now, if you aren't familiar, it's a fabric that is made out of plastic, basically, so it has a softer feel, but is still less prone to stains than actual fabric would. Normally, you type on it slightly elevated and connected to the bottom of the screen, but on the version with the pen, you can pull it down to reveal a small cubby for the new Surface Slim pen. This little area is also magnetic, and again, that magnet is no joke. It'll even flip the pen around if you try to put it in upside down. And it even charges the pen for you, which is just clever and convenient for sure. That pen, when removed from said cubby, automatically brings up two shortcuts. The full screen snip, which quickly takes a screenshot of the screen, so you can then annotate it with the pen, and the whiteboard app. That whiteboard app is very minimalistic, in a good way, and meant to represent the physical tool for which it is named after, of course. You can also use different pen types, choose different colors, add a ruler that you can use with your other hand to create more precise lines, and you can turn the pen around and use the back as an eraser. Now, you have to push the pen against the screen enough that the rear button on it is pressed in order to erase. And the faster you move on the screen while erasing, the larger the eraser gets. You can also share the whiteboard using Microsoft Teams or a web-based link and collaborate with others on it. Now in the pen settings, you can also change what app launches when the rear button is pressed, double pressed, and then pressed and held. You can decide what font the handwriting is in, what hand you actually want to write with, and other settings for the handwriting recognition in here as well. Moving around the device, we have two USB-C ports and our volume rocker on the left. And we have a power button and the proprietary Surface charging port on the right. One thing glaringly missing though is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So if you want to use wired headphones, you'll need to buy a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter dongle or use a pair of USB-C headphones. The charger is a 65 watt version that can charge the device from zero to 80% in about an hour, which I can confirm works pretty much as advertised. I'm not gonna lie, I sort of love that fast charging is becoming more and more popular on laptops and not just phones, by the way. That battery, by the way, will last up to 13 hours according to Microsoft, and I can confirm that it does last close to that at least. 
And that is thanks in big part to that chipset that we should probably start to talk about. That chipset is a Microsoft Surface SQ1 processor, which in reality is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX that has been, quote, optimized for Surface Pro X specifically to enhance the performance and user experience for graphics rich applications, end quote. This chipset is important to note in this device though, because it is essentially based on Qualcomm Snapdragon mobile processors, the ones that you're used to seeing in your flagship phones. And because of that, it isn't quite as powerful, say like an Intel i7, but has other mobile-like benefits instead, like better battery life, integrated gigabit LTE, instant on capabilities, etc. while still apparently being more powerful than an Intel i5, at least according to tests that Qualcomm did. This is also important to note because it will run most apps that you'll use on a daily basis, like Office, the Chrome browser, Windows Store apps, and even some of the Adobe suite. Photoshop, for example, and some others have been optimized for it, and Adobe has announced that they will bring the rest of the suite as well, but there is just no time frame yet. There are some less common apps that might have an issue though, i.e. when I tried to install Google Drive File Stream, which is a program I use to access Google Drive and Windows Explorer, it just says installation failed. Honestly though, this is the only program that I've tried to install for my normal workflow that didn't work. Now the reason for this is because the architecture the chipset uses is called ARM64. And long story short, the apps have to either be optimized for that architecture or they have to run in an emulator of sorts within Windows to be able to be used. Now to clarify, because of this, it isn't going to be a powerhouse of a laptop for video editing or gaming, etc. It's really meant to just be as portable as possible and handle most things you do on a normal basis, like the things I just mentioned. And for the most part, it seems to be able to do that, at least in my limited testing. When choosing a device, you can select from either 8 gigs of RAM and either a 128 or 256 gig SSD, or 16 gigs of RAM with either a 256 or a 512. Now, that SSD was mentioned by Microsoft as being removable. But when you check the fine print on their website, it says, quote, hard drive is not user removable. Hard drive is only removable by a skilled technician following Microsoft provided instructions, end quote. Now, that's not entirely true. You can remove it yourself and replace it with another one. The thing is though that they used a particular type of SSD, an M.2 2230, that if you look up online and try to buy, uh, well, you can as far as I can tell. No place seems to have them. Um, now maybe that'll change as this device becomes more popular, maybe that type of SSD does, but for now, don't expect to just buy the smallest SSD from Microsoft with the plan to then upgrade it yourself to a larger one. You know, something we would maybe do with other laptops. To me, this removability seems more like a security feature for businesses that buy the device for their employees and need to maybe recover data from the drives. Now in the area where you get to the SSD, which you do so by using a SIM ejector tool to open a metal cover under the kickstand, there's also access to a nano SIM slot that you can use to enable the LTE that I mentioned before. Now, something that is a bit odd to me is that one of the biggest benefits of the chipset Microsoft is using in here is that according to Qualcomm, the makers of it, it can get a lot more than 13 hours of battery life. And indeed, Samsung has just launched a laptop with the same chipset. It's called the Galaxy Book S. It isn't actually available for purchase yet, but on that they list 23 hours of battery life. Now, for whatever reason, it seems Microsoft apparently decided to put in a smaller battery, maybe in order to make it lighter and thinner instead of opting for the crazy amount of battery life the chipset seems capable of. But 13 hours is still really good. And again, I confirm that that's pretty close to accurate. For software, we're running Windows 10 Home with our usual Microsoft Blowware game or two, like Farm Heroes Saga here, but they are easily removed by just right-clicking and selecting on install. Really quickly though, here is the score from Geekbench 4 for anyone interested in benchmarks. It happens to be the only one that I could get to work on this ARM architecture. Their Surface Pro X is available for purchase right now, and it starts at $9.99 for the 8 gig, 128 gig model, and goes up to $17.99 for the 16 gig, 512 gig model. Now honestly, I've never really been a huge fan of the Pro lineup form factor. I'd rather just have my laptop be a clamshell for the most part. But with the Surface Pro X and its much longer battery life, much nicer design, even over the regular Pro models, I think, and the way that the pen works, I find myself even using it without the keyboard attached, which I normally wouldn't do. Now because of this though, I find myself thinking of it really as more of a capable tablet with a keyboard, LTE, pen, etc., rather than a two-in-one PC. And in that respect, it might actually give the iPad Pro 12.9 inch a run for its money. There you guys, let me know what you think in the comments below of this video of this laptop two-in-one tablet keyboard doohickey. Um, always love to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.